Hi, good afternoon again. Now we're going to talk about the ion exchange water softening. That's going to cover the process. Uh, like water softener from the name itself, water softener, makes the water soft. That, that means there's something make make the water hard. So what are those ions that usually make the water hard? It's calcium and magnesium. Calcium and magnesium, those are like uh, bivalent ions. I mean, they're like medium size ions, the big ones. So they're not small. Now, whenever we see like some, some spots in the water, like in the faucet, when you go to a car wash, you see a lot of spots. That's what we call about hard water. Having a water softener would save you a lot of money. When you, when you go to the car wash, the minimum requirement is having a water softener. We always recommend having softener on the emergency process. When you go to like any process like houses or like hotels, like for laundry or, or like for washing, big things like in the, in the hotels or in the, in the, like any manufacturing facilities, like iron exchange water softening is, is, is really a necessity because you would save a lot of, a lot of, a lot of money by installing water softening. I want to get some examples like where we can some save money, we can save some money. Like let's let's take a small scale so people can understand it easily. Like in houses, having a water softener in a house would save about 50% of the detergents in the, in the house between like the dishwasher laundry, the dishwasher detergent, the laundry. Uh, we'd also save money on the power because the minute you have water harvest accumulation or the buildup of the water heater, that means like the heat transfer between the, the heating elements or the burner to the water is going to take more time. That means you're going to spend more energy, more electricity, or more gas. You're going to also save a lot of money uh, by, you know, saving the, the faucets, the, the expensive appliances. You're going to save, save a lot of money on the piping network in the house or, or, or the manufacturing facilities. Those are all expensive. Now, the, the, the direct expenses are maybe not really, really high, but can you imagine if those, those pipes are totally clogged and you're gonna open all the walls and change all those pipes again and again, it's gonna take a lot of money. So it's gonna be really expensive. So why don't you do a, like, a, like a maintenance and just consider that as a preliminary solution before you go into like breaking the walls and you know changing all the piping and the faucets and, and appliances. Now there's a lot of other advantages for having a water softener like, like for the human body, skin, hair, um, when you do the detergents like softer clothes, you, know, you, you name it, tons of tons of applications that would save you money and convenience inside uh, the house or inside the manufacturing facilities. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the water softening process. Like what we explained earlier, water softener is like it has an ion exchange resin, resin beads. Those are little uh, round circles. Like uh, they either they come in dark brown or gold color. So it depends on the manufacturer, and uh, they do an exchange between different ions. Ions in the water softener case, the the ion exchange takes calcium and magnesium and release sodium. Now some people they would tell you, okay, it releases sodium, so yeah, maybe it's not a good thing to, to drink water out of the softener because when you have a blood pressure or something, so yeah, you, you don't want to drink water with, with the sodium. So people, instead of regenerating the resin with the sodium chloride, which is salt, they, they regenerate with the potassium chloride. If you want to use potassium chloride, you can use this water to, to irrigate the grass or use it for like as a water fertilizer. So it's more expensive, but I mean it depends on the on the application where, where you expose this water. Some cities they would not allow you to dispose the, the drain because at the end this water is going to the to the ocean. So it's not it's not really allowed to to discharge the wastewater from the software in some cities. But most cities are, are okay. Now Talking about the water softener again, 
The water softener is, is, a, is a good pretreatment for a lot of different processes, like uh, uh, the reverse osmosis. It prevents uh, membranes to be found because it takes out the big ions like the calcium and the magnesium and traces of iron and the magnesium. Now, how do we clean the resin? Like what we mentioned, we regenerate the, the resin because after a while, when, when it does a lot of exchange capacity, exchange, exchanging between ions, so the exchange capacity is gonna, it's gonna get ruined. It's gonna, it's gonna exhaust. So we need to reactivate or regenerate the water software. How do we do something like this? We need to regenerate the software. And how do we do something like this? We will explain it like uh, quickly, like in a, in a small scale water softener. Again, the water softener comes like a valve and a tank and uh, brine tank here, which is a salt, and you have like a brine well, and you have a cord, and then you have uh, like a half inch or three quarter or three eighths inch tubing, and you have the resin here. This is all resin, and then you have the gravel here. So that's the iron exchange resin. Usually for the water sample, it has a 30,000 grains exchange capacity. That means it can exchange about 30,000 grains. In the California water here, Southern California, I mean, it's an average between eight or seven to 10 grains harvest, the, the, the harvest degree. So most of the houses here, like, they would go for, the south would give you about 2,000 gallons between the, the two exchange capacity or between the two regenerations. Now, uh, controlling the, the backwash or the regeneration could be through a timer or it could be a meter. Because you don't want to waste the salt. It's, it's a little different from the water filter. Water filter, it takes about 10 minutes to do the backwash. And it's, there is no salt. So it's, it's cheap to do that with the backwash. Here in the water softener, we do like a, the, the, the salt here. Usually we use the salt tablet. You can buy those from many, like Home Depot or Lowe's, or you can buy online. And those, usually, the water would be up to here. So, and that brine solution, when the software is doing the regeneration, it does the brine suction and goes very slow. So that's a saturated brine solution, it is traced with the resin, and that's when it cleans the resin, takes the sodium again and releases the, the calcium and magnesium to the drink. Now, some people, they would ask a lot of questions. How do I regenerate? Why? When, when shall I have a timer? When shall I have a meter? I always like for like non-attended applications or like houses or like areas where there is a like, good amount of automation, I would always use the, the meter. Because if you don't have some operators to monitor the software, do the some measurements and whatever, you know, go for the meter because you're gonna save uh, yourself water and you're gonna save, you save yourself a lot of salt. So it's always go it's, it's always good to go with the water meter in case of soft for residential and like commercial applications. Now the like what we explained to, to before like this is the resin or the softening bed and that's the gravel here and that's where all the action happens where it takes all the, the calcium and magnesium and releases the sodium instead. As an average, you need to fill about one bag a month, maybe one and a half bag a month. The first initial when you start the softener, you might need to have three or four bags. That's when you fill the, the tank. But the, the makeup is going to be about one, let's say one to two bags maximum a month. It's very simple operation. Now, you have like a service, which is like getting the water, passing through the resin and going out. It's going to be a soft water. Now, we need to remember something like, since we're talking about general applications here, the higher the TDS, you're going to have some leakage in the, in the water. When I say leakage, it's not going to give you zero harness or a, like very soft water. The higher the TDS, you're going to start getting some leakage. So you're going to get maybe 5 ppm, then higher TDS, 10 ppm. So, so it's the higher the TDS, because it's, 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 a, it's like a, the saltier the water, that means it's going to be in continuous priming, continuous regeneration. So that's why it's not going to give 
like uh, software and all this, if the, if the T date is really high. Now, the last thing that I'm gonna, that I'm going to talk about about the, the the size. Again, the server could be as small as seven inch diameter, all the way up to maybe eighty four inch diameter. There are other technologies besides the water softener that people, some people, they don't like to use the the saw because it's, it's bulky and it's headache and whatever. There is other technologies similar to the reverse osmosis called the nanofiltration. We call it in our terms softening membranes. And this is the process where it replaces the softener and does a better job than the last. Thank you.